Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this episode of Mondays with Mindy. Hey, Mindy. Hey, Christian. Today, we're going to have a conversation with actress, director, producer, politician, and former president of the Screen Actors Guild, Melissa yeah. Gilbert. Big deal. Yeah. Born and raised in Los Angeles, Melissa began her career as a child actress. There seems to be a little bit of a theme in season four here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, she began in the late 1960s, appearing in numerous commercials and guest roles in television. But in 1974, she began a 10 year run starring as Laura Ingalls on the NBC hit series Little House on the Prairie. During that run, she also appeared in several popular television movies, including the award winning The Diary of Anne Frank. And of course, her amazing performance uh, with Anne Bancroft in The Miracle Worker. After Little House, Melissa continued to work in front and behind the camera regularly and for her contribution contributions to the television industry, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Nice. Her most recent credits include turns on stage both regionally and off Broadway. Melissa served as the president of my union, the Screen Actors Guild, for two terms. And in 19 in, in excuse me, 19 in 2015, Melissa announced her campaign for to run for Michigan's uh, eighth congressional district, but had to drop out, unfortunately, due to health issues. She <laughs> currently lives with her husband, actor Timothy Busfield, on their property in upstate New York. Wow. I'm very excited to meet her, ladies and I gentlemen. I mean, I haven't seen her in decades, so I'm looking <laughs> forward to it, too. <laughs> Agreed. Let's bring her in, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for Melissa Gilbert. Wonderful. Welcome. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, lovey. <laughs> you look amazing. I shouldn't be shocked, but you do. Oh, God bless. <laughs> Thank you. No, so you. I, I, I'm also, I'm blessed to be married to an incredibly talented director who's also learned how to light. So if you light down my zooms. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Um, so we start each episode. Christian and I came up with kind of like 20 questions. I, I picked five randomly and we just kind of start gabbing. Oh, great. OK. Yeah, that's how we start. Um, Melissa, what's your favorite place in the world and why? Um, it's interesting. Before COVID, I would have said some exotic place that I'd been on vacation but sure. since COVID, I've fallen so much more in love with home. Hmm. I, it, it's it, especially our place upstate because now it's become this um, wonderful. We have you know our chickens and our vegetable garden, and now spring is here, and we're starting to plan our new summer project. And we're always building something and creating something up there. This year. We're taking four huge shipping containers ourselves and turning them into a giant sla barn slash storage facility and signing, wow. siding it with old barn wood. And we're learning to do all these crazy DIY product projects. Huh. And it, it's sort of like, it, it reminds me a lot of, of the show I grew up on. I feel like I've gone back <laughs> to the house on the prairie, but real this time. I don't have a special <laughs> effects guy making the fire for me. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah. Listen, those shipping containers are no joke. Uh, my dear friend, Doug, dug one into he, he has a, a ranch in Marfa and he dug it into the ground and turned it into a swimming pool. Yep. You can actually turn them into swimming pools uh, in ground and above ground. Oh, yeah. oh. they're insane. But they're, I, I'm kind of loving this barn idea. Holy heck. Too. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really fun. I don't know if any animals will live in there necessarily. <laughs> but I never know. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. This I'm, I'm interested in it. Who is the most fascinating person you've met? I mean, you've got a long list there, kiddo. Holy crow. <laughs> uh, there's so many, cause I have so many different lives, right? Yes. <laughs> All of the wonderfully talented actors and, 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 uh, actresses and directors and people I worked with. There's the teachers who inspired me. There's my own relatives. And then there's all the people I met in my varying leadership positions. Whether I'm just going to say politicians. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whether I was running for Congress or, or president of Screen Actors Guild. Um, I, I mean. Who I, comes to mind in this moment? Anyone stand up? Two, two things that first popped in my head. Yeah, good. King Hussein of Jordan oh. and um, and President Obama. 
were like, <laughs> but he wasn't president. He was nowhere near president when I met him. I met him at it. I was on the AFL CIO Executive Council, and we had a convention in Chicago, and he was a senator, and he was our keynote speaker. And I Amazing. remember listening to him speak. Get, this is a, this, I'm like nauseous saying this myself and turning to Ted Kennedy <laughs> and saying, yeah, oops, dropped another one. Yeah. Excuse me. Let me pick up that name. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I turned to him and I said, oh, he's amazing. Like, huh. like I would know this, but <laughs> this, no, that's the whole, those experiences are yeah. mind boggling that I, I look back on it and go, oh yeah. You know, while I'm at, out cleaning poop out of the chicken coop now i think back to those moments and go wow who am i listen and i have to say not to gloss over king hussein who i think is one of the most amazing humanitarian incredible leaders no oh extraordinary oh. leader and um he came he came to the u.s when i was president of screen actors guild and they had a big they had these big meetings in uh, for him to meet all of the quote leaders of hollywood yeah and i had the option of going to the ladies lunch with um <gasps> queen his wife oh my gosh who i adore and worship as well or hanging out with the dudes and going to the luncheon for the king and i was oh. like well, i mean i'd love a lady who lunches but <laughs> oh no I'm president right now i think i should go hang out with the yes. king yes well, and because you asked, I think you make the right decision. So there, Thank you, you. there you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa, when was the last time you cried? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. I cry on the daily. I just yeah. do. Are, do you mostly cry out of happiness or sadness? Which is your most frequent? Mostly happiness. Because I'm most, I'm happy most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I have a tendency to do like the, I do like a Holly Hunter broadcast news kind of cry <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere where i'll like look at something and all of a sudden i just go <laughs> and it's over oh it's so fantastic yes i usually warn the person that i'm with um uh, i'm i'm think a proper weep is happening because i'm usually moved by something so that but i think you just bested me that is phenomenal yeah you, and you know what yesterday i don't know when the show airs but yesterday was a really big day for america and that's why i cried yesterday for us chronologically was the day of the Derek chauvin verdict and i yes guess. so this will this will this will uh this episode will launch probably in a few weeks but i still think so men, uh, this will still no 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 but i still moments. think this will be a week of headline moment. news yeah forever this, just the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. As it's it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who do you admire and why? Again, just in this moment today, as it comes to you, I we won't hold you my, to it. I, I, I admire, I admire, there's a, a few people that come to mind immediately. I admire my husband because of his ability to be, I would say 98% of the time, so easygoing and so um, just chill. He's just very chill. Necessary. I, it, it's really necessary, especially when you're with, you know, a lunatic like me, who's just kind of, you know, a little bit all over the place. And, and I admire um, all of our children. We have seven children all together. Wow. Um, yeah, he has three, I have four, and we have two, three grandkids and another one coming. And I just, I love watching who these people are now. They're like, they're my favorite people to hang out with. They're funny, they're smart, they're compassionate, they're active and activated, they're socially conscious, and they're, so far, the ones who are parents are much better parents than we ever were. And I just, I, I so admire um who they are. I just think they're great humans. How fun is everyone in the general vicinity? Or are you spread out all over? You're so spread out. That's the oh. only thing that's so hard because we, we have yeah. two kids here. My youngest, Michael, is here in the city. Um, just now, now that now that we're getting through the pandemic, he came here to start his acting career. God, oh, great. So he's so talented. Um, and not because I'm his mom. I mean, like I would say. I'm you know, excited. I've seen, I've seen my kids do some bad performances and not this one. <laughs> um, um, 
so he's here. Tim's mm-hmm. oldest son, Willie Bosfield, is here. Uh-huh. And then my son, Dakota, and his wife are in Austin, Texas. Tim's mm-hmm. daughter, Daisy, her husband, their two kids, and his son, Sam Bosfield, they're in Sacramento. And my kids, Lee and Sam Boxleitner, and Sam's wife, Andrea, and their daughter, my granddaughter, Lula Bell, are in LA. Oh, wow. Oh, so wow. You are literally really coast to coast. Out. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We uh, pre-COVID tried to get together, all of us, at least once a year for some reason. Oh, that's um, great. And yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. So now that things are kind of easing, though, we're, Tim and I are planning a cross country because there's a grandbaby coming in June. So we want to be there for that in yeah. Texas. Of course. Congratulations yeah. in advance. It's just everything. Um, really among your friends, what are you best known for? Uh, two things. My sense of humor. Um, I mean, I will literally, I'll go any, I'll do anything for a laugh. I'll walk into a wall if it'll make people laugh. That's, <laughs> I was raised by stand up comics. So people right. don't know that about me because I was on the weeping show. You know, they just assume that as my goal. Well, I can attest. It's, it's been a minute, but I can attest that you are quite deliciously funny. Oh, bless your heart. Thank Very you. Very good wit <laughs> as well, not just the physical. Thank you. Um, Oh my God. What was the second thing? Ask me the question again. See, and I have no memory anymore. No, that's please. (laughs) No, the question was among your friends, what are you best known for? Oh, my ability to absorb and share medical knowledge. I'm like a walking, they call me Dr. Mel. I'm like a walking encyclopedia. When I, I wanted to be a doctor, I, Hmm. I I applied to colleges pre-med. I was going to go. I wanted to be specifically a pediatric neurosurgeon. Um, don't ask me why at 17, that was it until yeah. I realized this hobby I had was actually <laughs> a career. <laughs> yes. My mom sat me down and was like, you know, you, you have a production company and you've done all of these movies on your own already. You could keep doing that and maybe play a right. doctor on television. <laughs> um, so I consequently, I absorb everything. If I have a medical crisis, I remember everything or anybody around me. I'm the first one that they call in, in as an advocate and I'm get between everybody and the doctors. And it's really kind of hmm. interesting, but only to me. <laughs> no, it's been obviously your friends. Cause that's fabulous to have somebody that, that can do that. Yeah. Um, what about politics? When did you start plugging in to being a politico? I was not, at least I didn't consider myself to be a political person all my childhood. Mm -hmm. I was an activist because my mother, um, God bless her, when we were kids and we were working kids, she got us involved in a lot of different organizations pretty early as more of a way to, to teach my brother and my sister and I how blessed we were and how important it was to mm. give service to others because mm-hmm. we were so fortunate yeah. to have the lives that we had. So, you know, it started with doing work um, with the Special Olympics and mm-hmm. different, just all kinds of different organizations that helped children. But the politics, I didn't really get it um, until I hit my early 20s. And I did a movie of the week um, the subject matter was about, it was about abortion and it was mm-hmm. in the eighties and it was with George C. Scott and Jacqueline Bissett, myself. And people got really mad that we had done this movie. It was about a mother and a, a stepmother and stepdaughter, both who got pregnant at the same time. Mm-hmm. The father, the judge um, wanted the daughter to, ha- to have the baby. And then when he found out that his young wife was pregnant, he wanted her to have an abortion or get a divorce. So Mm -hmm. we got that conflict and it was really controversial. And I thought, well, why? Yeah. I started digging in deeper. And that's when that my, that part, that activist part started. And then it just snowballed from there. Yeah. And then, I mean, being president of a guild obviously is its own lane, but did that sort of give you the, um, I don't know, a lack of a better word, ego to sort of like move forward with, with your voice more assuredly. Um, Cause you really dealt with in both your terms dealt with some stuff. Yeah, I did. It, it gave me, um, 
I don't know if I would say ego necessarily, definitely chutzpah to do it, Mm -hmm. but gave me the confidence to know that if I could navigate that political landscape, and it Mm -hmm. was, I mean, we had factions, we had the warring back and forth. And then, um, uh, you know, learning the things that I learned, not just that, but learning how to negotiate a $250 million collective bargaining agreement. I mean, (laughs) who does that? Not many people do that. Yeah, Yeah. right? And there's no training for it. You don't go to sag president school you get elected and you do it yeah right but you just to know it and um from there sitting on the afl cio executive council on the california film commission I, that was like from major the into the fire and yeah. once i had all of that down um and had an understanding of what i was dealing with i thought oh i could i could do this hmm. yeah do you see yourself acting wise and i know you write and produce and direct and all that. But as, as an, I'm just speaking actress to actress. Do you, do you see yourself picking, picking that back up? What acting? Yes. Never stopped. In True. Fact, but I meant, I meant with full steam ahead, concentrated effort. Yes. Except hmm. I, you know, having you, and I know you're going to get this because you've been acting since you were a zygote as well. Um, <laughs> having had this long a career, um, mm-hmm. I, I lack a bit of the competitive edge. You know, I don't, I don't get as excited to go through the whole, I mean, I'll, I will go through the audition process if need be. And I, of I, course. Do, I love the actual work, like being here in New York before COVID doing all sorts of plays all over the city. Yes. Was a blast. I did a one woman show in the West Village, a comedy. I'd never thought I could do anything like that. And I had the time of my life scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> love it. So I will still do it. I just am not as ambitious about it anymore. Mm-hmm. And um Um, and I really am enjoying, you know, I don't, I feel like I didn't really, not that I didn't have a childhood, but I didn't have a very relaxed childhood. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of pressure. Um, and so I'm really enjoying not having a lot of pressure now, especially if my kids grown and gone, I'm sort of kind of going with the flow a bit more, but I do, when I work, when I do work, I absolutely uh, love it. Love it. Love yeah. It. Well, I asked that because I asked the question that I get asked a lot and I, my answer is the same as yours. Like I've never stopped. So, so seemingly to the public and the outside world, you know, um, uh, my biggest, I think misunderstanding out there is people, um, assume that I'm not working cause I don't want to, um, which I, I find hilarious. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's not up to me kiddos, you know? So, um, but, exactly so I just right. I yeah, I wanted to have you answer the questions that I get asked, too, because, of course, I want to like deep dive and fact find and steal your answers, probably. Um, <laughs> As people also say, I don't know if you hear this a lot. When are we going to see you on television again? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I that part of me died. Yes. And I, I, you know, I have to kind of say, well, I, I can't, you know, and, and I have said on occasion, I can't, I'm in the middle of doing a play right now and I can't do that. Oh, excellent. So That's the best answer ever. Yes. And, and let's be honest. I mean, at, at once as a, a female actor, which is the politically correct name for us. Oh yes. Now no actress anymore. Yeah, yes. I, I learned that when I was the presidentess of SAG. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as we age, the opportunities get fewer and farther yeah. between for 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 roles in general, but for really interesting roles. So yes. there's that to contend with too. And there's still just as many of us as there were when we were in our twenties, but there are fewer roles and we're all still vying for them. So they yes. Can't us all, all the time. Agreed. Agreed. Is there a, um, I, I want to give me a different word than failure. Cause I'm, I really don't identify with that, but was there something that, that happened and, and fell like a dull thud that you now look back on and say that was a really big lesson learned, uh, or a disappointment or a, it Lots doesn't have disguise. to be professional. It could be personal, but a point in your life where you went, I never want to go through that again, but on the flip side, now that I have space from it, 
I've learned dot, dot, dot. Did I ask that in a good way? That's sort of everything that, um, that has caused suffering in any way, shape or form, whether it's looking back on a, a film that I did that I just did not have the life experience to portray or that I, you know, phoned in and did, wasn't paying attention to mm -hmm. lesson learned. I won't be doing that again. Same thing with relationships. I mean, it's no secret that I chose the, I don't want to say wrong partners, but the sort of mismatched partners for a really long time. And, and um, there was a, always a lack of compatibility that spurred in me this kind of need to conquer it. Okay, well, I'm going to change him and he's going to be the way I want him to be. And that'll be my guy. And it yeah. never worked. And I finally really had to let that one go and think, okay, I'm just going to be on my own. And then, you know, in walked Tim, who checked all the boxes, even the ones I didn't even know I was <laughs> yeah. missing, right? Yeah. But there was no more being with people who, with who I was so diametrically opposed and trying mm -hmm. to change them into the person I wanted them to be. That's yeah. A, yeah. That's big. Yeah. I, I'd have to say for me that that's ditto and also just even professionally people that I or the kinds of people that I thought I wanted to work with. And then given the opportunity, I work with them and I realize this does not feel the way that I imagined it in my mind or that I thought it would go. And so I'm going to hands off that and just say yes to what comes my way. That's supposed to happen instead of just trying to like tackle and fight for it. And, you know, I think expectations um, uh, maybe, maybe one of the big lessons to learn eventually is to try and live without expectations. That's yeah. a big, you know, expectations yeah. will, you, you, you're going to end up getting crushed in some way. Yeah. Too many of them. Um, Melissa, who or what inspires you, you know, right now, as we're sitting here, like what comes to mind when I, I say inspire. Frontline healthcare workers. Oh, they still, yeah. they still get me. I, yeah. The fact that these <laughs> that these people are out there doing what they're doing on a daily basis, caring for um, all of us, but continuing to care for a portion of the nation that doesn't Ooh. care either. You know? Yes. <laughs> still out there and that they, they will still treat anyone regardless of where they're from, what their background is, who they are. I, I have, I have so much admiration for them and what they do. I, um, yeah. Tim and I both volunteer upstate at a vaccination site. Oh, so, yeah. We we I'm a greeter, and I I wear my little greeter vest, and I have my mask on, and nobody knows it's me. And I, I love do it. Dances, and I jump around. The only time people know it's me is if someone has a little bit of a bad reaction or has a hard time. The nurses know to tell them. Do you know who's here? She'll come <laughs> talk to you. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's like yeah. a superpower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's totally it a superpower. I, yeah. I, I love I, that. Yeah, that's what, my what have you guys been binging on or have you? Is there something that you guys have been watching that? I'm right now. I'm uh, I, we're always a little bit behind because at our house upstate, we have the we have satellite Internet, so we can't stream anything. So we have an office up there in a, a little town called Barryville. Uh -huh. So we have, we have high speed internet there and we have high speed internet here in the city. So I'm, I'm late to everything. I am currently <laughs> binging Ted Lasso. Uh, loving it. <laughs> I have been bragging about it since it came on. Thank you for, yeah, it's sublime. I can't from him. I can't. I have right? no idea he had that in him. And, I'm well, so I, and I don't, I, and he's what I love about it is the story of, you know, it's all his friends. He's doing it with all his best mates. Uh, and they all wrote it and produce it. And I'm just like obsessed. Yeah. Season two is just announced on Tuesday, Monday or yes. Tuesday. Yeah. They and they the actually trailer. have a preview out that they say is supposed to be great that I haven't seen yet. Yes. Yeah. They're shooting two good. and three. I haven't finished season oh. one yet. Yeah. Oh, right, right before that, my binge before that, which I was also late for was Shit's Creek. Oh, fantastic. Oh, so good. Fresh I love that you're doing the comedy thing. Yeah. Uh, too yeah. that, that no, but the, the choice is to yeah, because I, I got into some heavy dramas which I love, but it you know, not not checking the mood there. Not the best <laughs> thing to be doing. I, I mean, I I have a tendency, actually, honestly, I watch a lot of um documentaries, uh, particularly medical <laughs> ones, because you know, Dr. <laughs> of course. So I got into, you know, Surgeon's Cut, which is a fantastic yes. 
documentary and I watch documentaries on hospice because I'm also a hospice volunteer. So, and I watch, you know, I watch documentaries on pediatric oncology. So that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is really heavy. So given the chance, yeah. I'll, I'll binge a comedy, especially if it's funny, bad, com bad comedy is yes. one of the worst uh. things in the world. <laughs> So I have to I, I want to ask this question because I, I fall into the vortex of of the farm where I think I'm going to, you know, I'll just go for a couple of weeks because, oh, I'm it's I'm going to then I'm going to have to go into the city. And truly, I'm I never more unhappy than when I'm leaving um, and I could be up there forever. And who knew who knew Mindy could be a farmer? Do you do you find your days up there sort of like melding one to the I mean, I really next pandemic, the only mistake I made was not getting on a on a plane fast enough and getting to the farm because yeah. I really I really would have done better there than here, um, just emotionally, psychologically, all of that stuff. Do you do you have that same thing where you just find yourself? Oh, my gosh, months have passed and we're still here doing our do here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you not just during the pandemic, but how many times it. Yeah. What day is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's Saturday? Oh. Like I used to, I mean, I, I was actually thinking about this this last weekend. Um, I don't know, it was Sunday, and I got up at 6 30 and was doing stuff. And I used to, I remember when my life was so regimented that Monday through Friday I would have to get up early and weekends I always slept in. But up there, it's I go to sleep at we go to sleep at like 10. <laughs> We're oh yeah. Cool. Listen, that's a late night for me. So uh, you guys are rocking rock stars up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's 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 violently upsetting to me that I got very comfortable going to bed at 830 in the winter. We uh, got, up there. Yeah. And when I say go to bed at 10, <laughs> I mean move from the recliner to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you are in New York City. And what 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 brings you to the city? Like why? Why are you there? We down, um, we come down for uh, doctor's appointments and haircuts. So Fantastic. you know, it was, it was physical time. It, for me, it was my it was the mammo time of year. Yes, and um, that's sort of it. We're going back up tomorrow. Yeah, so you just oh. do a little drive through and. Yeah, and especially now that we don't have to have meetings face to face anymore. Although Tim does have a face to face meeting tomorrow, and. He was, oh my shooting, gosh. he was shooting a series. He was, his show was the first show back in New York city last year during the pandemic. So he was, they were the first ones to film with the protocols and everything. So he oh was my gosh. a lot last year. I didn't, yeah, come, yeah. you didn't come down with him. No. Yeah. Only was Why? More than two days. Yeah. 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 Wow. No. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. Well, I want to thank you so much from Christian and I, I just can't tell you what a perk pep, whatever it's been to like, <laughs> see your face, you are ageless. And oh, I have such fond memories of us hanging out. Um, I just, I think you're incredible. And I'm, I'm just so thrilled that we got to reconnect. I'm so excited. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm such an, um, a fuddy duddy when it comes to things like social media and stuff. I mean, I have it because you have to have it. And I post and I do like to stay connected, especially during the pandemic. It was really nice to, yes. to connect with people that way. But one of the greatest things is being able to go, hey, there she is. Click. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I, tell, I tell Christian all the time. I said, honestly, it doesn't dawn on me. First of all, as my granny Rose would say, I'm only on the Instagram. I'm not on the Facebook or the TikTok or anything else. So it's you know, it's, a, you know, a portion of the social media world, but I, I'm a little bit of a hoe when it comes to it. I kind of love it. Um, but to constantly refine people or just connect to people that I've been fans of, it's been so amazing. Yeah. 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 That's, so that, um, that is a good thing. So I'm, I will be forever grateful to in the, the Instagram. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank to, you. To one that's on the webs. <laughs> <laughs> that enabled us to connect again because this is yes this and when and when I head east again which hopefully will be you know after my birth our birthdays because where our birthdays are in May aren't isn't your birthday in when May yours 20th yeah. eighth eighth oh, so yours is right around the corner listen I can't remember anything but I remember that her birthday's in May I mean don't ask um <laughs> uh I will I will hit you up because I would love to reconnect and and we we go to each other's you know, places upstate. 
I would absolutely love that. And I'm fully vaxxed. In fact, I you know. am, um, I am today is my second week after my second vax. So, oh, I so you're am, fully, fully, fully I'm inoculated. robust with the Moderna yeah. vaccine. <laughs> Good well, I, you. too, am robust in many ways, but also in the way that you just <laughs> described. So thank you. Um, so I, I will be, you know, tap, tap, tapping come Please summer. Do. Come, 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 come see the chickens. Come hang out. I will. I'm going to have lots of really fun vegetables this year. That's my okay. life. OK, That's I awesome. love it. That's awesome. I love Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so thankful okay. to have had her one more time. Melissa Gilbert. Yay. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, my gosh. The best. This episode of Mondays with Minnie is brought to you in part by our sponsors, The Cocktail Party, Love Mary, and Beekman 1802. Tired of cooking? Love fancy hors d'oeuvres but don't have any idea how to prepare? Look no further. The Cocktail Party, Love Mary, is here. For 15 years, New York's caterer to the stars and our pal, Mary Giuliani, has served her deliciously whimsical hors d'oeuvres to the best names in art, fashion, and entertainment. Now she's put them all in an adorable little box to send from her heart to your home. As Mary says, all you have to do is turn on your oven, Pour yourself a drink and enjoy more time with your guests. She'll take care of the rest. Go to MaryGiuliani.com or MondaysWithMindy.com for more information and to order yours today. Beekman 1802 is a clean and cruelty-free beauty company founded on a goat farm in upstate New York. We craft a range of products from goat milk soaps and body care to clean and clinically proven skin care, all safe for sensitive skin. Visit Beekman1802.com or MondaysWithMindy.com and discover why more than a million neighbors have joined our community.